Welcome to the Relationship Toolbox, a show about the skills we need to build healthy relationships with others. Today we're going to discuss the communication skills that might help us to reconnect with others after the pandemic that we have been through this past year. We will be examining such questions as, do we talk about this past year? Um, what we are, are, have been dealing with? How do we use a skill called thoughtful inquiry if we are trying to discover how our friend or maybe a spouse um, has been dealing with this and what they are feeling? What is to be gained from discussing this topic? And if we choose to um, discuss the, our experience of COVID, how do we start the discussion, especially if we are still experiencing strong feelings about it? What if the person we are talking to is critical of the, or ridicules even our views on what we've been through? Or what if they even start to make fun of some of the precautions that we might still be using? So these are all the topics that we would like to uh, discuss mm. today. Um, so before choosing to discuss this with a friend or whomever we decide to do that with, um, it's really important, I think, that we be, make sure that we are comfortable with the topic itself. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it was even unusual for us to come in today to the studio because it's the first time that we've yes, not had to wear a without mask. Without masks, yes. So, you know, it's a mindset, it's also physical, and um, it's, it's, you're thinking about it all the time. Right. Um, so it's helpful to kind of examine it, and as we've talked about in other discussions that we might be having with people about other topics, labeling our feelings and mm -hmm. kind of examining what thoughts have we had. Not that you should know everything because the discussion will help to uncover some of that, but at least to be somewhat aware of that. The other thing is uh, to make sure that I'm really interested in what the other person has to say. Mm -hmm. And I'm not just using this as a means of sort of unloading, oh, let me tell you all the things I've been through this past year, mm -hmm. and using them as a captive listener. Uh, we want to make sure that it is for the purpose of listening to them as well. Just like we've said in the past in terms of the, the respect and the, the reflective yes. listening and the sharing the space. Right. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to apply those rules to this topic too. Exactly. <clears throat> so, Marcia, let's take a look at some of the typical um, responses, I guess, people might have had or reactions to this that we've learned about over the years, yeah. over this past uh, year. I know that uh, I've felt a lot of these things, <laughs> and, I, and it's not just like one feeling that we've had, because throughout the, the whole continuum, you may have had different feelings. But certainly, uh, initially at least, there was anxiety and fear um, and a sense of vulnerability and a threat to our, our health and our and, and we were afraid of physical proximity with people and exposure. Mm -hmm. And so um, there may have been financial insecurity too. So there was this fear and anxiety and, and some people may still have that, um, particularly depending on where they are in the vaccination. Um, and then isolation and the sadness and the depression that came with that and the loss of being with people or <laughs> being stuck with the same people. Mm -hmm. And for some people, it was a blessing because they got to see their children who may have been away at college otherwise. But then for some people, they were, they were, they had no release and they had no way to cope and to get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. um, we were missing friends and family and it was, it was sad. There was also frustration of the unknown and a sense of helplessness and, and being out of control. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when is this going to be over? Um, will things ever be the same? What's happening with my job? Will, will I go to school? Oh, wow. um, Even knowing uh, what do I believe? Who do I believe? Yeah, I mean, whom do I trust? What do I believe? It was also new and unknown, and information was, was being developed, and everybody had a different theory and story. <laughs> So it was really hard to know. And, um, the information was even evolving. Unfolding, <laughs> yeah. Um, and because of that, people may have been applying their own lenses um, and speculation and, and biases to the, what was unfolding. And um, you know, we, 
we fell into the camps that we might have been in before, but this amplified our, mm -hmm. our disposition. So um, there was a fear of even speaking about this because yes. you might be attacked. Um, anger and frustration about this as mm -hmm. well. Um, you know, um, people felt strongly about the precautions that, and the rules that were put into place, whether they were too strong or too weak, and whether they were um, people friendly or business friendly, and how long we were supposed to, and it was on and off, and it, w it seemed hard to find a consistent path through, and so that was frustrating. Yeah. Even we've talked about this in the past, the, the fact that anger uh, is a secondary emotion, it overcomes um, other emotions so mm -hmm. that it hides them uh, mm -hmm. with it. So we might have experienced anger uh, from others or toward ourselves even, um, which covered over actually a fear. A fear. Or insecurity yeah, sense. Um, of being vulnerable. Um, but it was also a time because in some cases we had nowhere to go but to kind of learn about ourselves and to be introspective and um, to take time with our our health, our mental health, our physical health, although our mental and physical health were both being taxed yes. <laughs> at the same time, um, you know, some people got creative and they discovered new things and there were silver linings to this experience. But at the same time, um, there's a sadness and a lack of joy mm -hmm. and um, even suspicion that maybe we aren't out of this, right. that this is just a lull. Um, and We've talked about the stages of grief in the past, and when um, we all may be at different places on that. Some mm -hmm. people are ready to move on, and other people are still very tense. Um, or some have really been suffering a loss of loved ones, of a job, of, a, of an identity, of a way of life, of, of uh, events that they, mm -hmm. they had to give up. A sense of security. Yeah, life. yeah, mm -hmm. and, and um, the loss of things that didn't happen because mm -hmm. of it as well. Like, um, but then some are coming out with a sense of gratitude and relief and, um, you know, a sense of a second chance because they are appreciative of what, what is important and with different perspectives and, um, a gratitude for the people that helped us through this, mm -hmm. whether it was health workers or, um, emergency folks or teachers or neighbors or, um, just a better connection um, and appreciation. So um, that is also a lovely piece of this. And I think we get to re-engage with purpose. We don't, mm -hmm. everybody is excited about returning to normal, but maybe normal isn't what we should be reaching for. Mm -hmm. Maybe something even richer, even deeper, even better. Because the new um, normal may not be what we mm -hmm. experienced in the past. And we've ha we have a chance to kind of reset and reboot our relationships, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. kind of reinvent as we negotiate and um, you know, ask for the boundaries and the consent of how that's gonna look. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what we're gonna try to delve into right. now. So um, with, with all these reactions that you've just outlined, why talk about it? Why just <laughs> not say, well, that, that was, in the past, let's, let's go on with the future, let's mm -hmm. forget about this, let's, why talk about it? Why are we even suggesting that people should talk about it? Well, <laughs> there, there's some benefit from that. Okay. Um, you know, it can be cathartic. Mm -hmm. um, expressing it can get it out of ourselves, mm -hmm. and that's, that's certainly one reason to do it. Um, We've also been separated, and when you're separated from people, you don't understand what they're going through as much. And so in order to share those little tidbits, we can reconnect. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a choreography, and it is, um, it is an agreement that we have to make with each other about how we're going to engage about this. Mm -hmm. um, the possibility, actually, to, to grow, because to, for some of us, we may not even know immediately after this as we go through it, um, what we have been experiencing that mm -hmm. may be coming later mm -hmm. uh, with, as you say, we go into new situations and have some leftover feelings from this experience. Uh, so I think by being able to talk with someone else whom we appreciate their views on mm -hmm. things, it can help us sort of set a, a, a 
journey or, or a path for us where we want to go with this information mm -hmm. and where we want to go with this experience in terms of our future. It may also give us a, just a contrast, even if it's not the same experience. We have something to kind of push off against and to reflect on. Mm -hmm. And we may not have gotten far enough away to have enough distance to really know the Cor impact, yeah. but we can That's go through point. it together. Mm -hmm. um, so. so if we choose to um, discuss this with someone and mm -hmm. we're okay with it ourselves and we really do care about the other person's thoughts and feelings and what we might learn from that. Um, this, one of the skills that we're going to be talking about today is, is called thoughtful inquiry. And of mm course, -hmm. when you inquire about something, it's a little bit different from interrogating people. Right. Uh, the inquiry certainly in, involves asking questions, uh, but it's for a different purpose than interrogation. It's for the purpose of really trying to understand and experience mm -hmm. another person's uh, experience of this. Kind of the empathy piece and to the curiosity empathy, piece, yeah. yeah. To try to be almost in their shoes mm -hmm. for the moment and uh, see, oh, that's what it was like for you. And in contrast to uh, interrogation with, for example, if you were to uh, ask someone about their experience of, of COVID and they said, oh, it was just an inconvenience mm -hmm. with it. And your feeling was very different. It really had quite an impact on your life. So you responded with, are you kidding? You know, uh, with all the death, with, with the, uh, our economy in the toilet. What in the world, how could you ever say anything like that? What mm -hmm. is the matter with you? Obviously a response like that does not invite thoughtful inquiry. Agree, yeah. <laughs> it will shut somebody down. Or if they don't shut down, it will put us into an argument with them mm -hmm. about how we each experience it. And that's not what we're that's talking about. That's not what we're looking for. No. So a thoughtful inquiry would be more like, uh, even if my experience was a lot different from just an inconvenience, I might say, well, I'm interested in the, what you said about that, yeah. about this being an inconvenience. Can you tell me more about how it was an inconvenience for you or how you saw this that way? Uh, or I never thought of it that way before. Um, that's an interesting observation. You know, can you tell me how you arrived at that? So you're still inviting the other person to share more so you can learn more about how they came to that conclusion. Mm -hmm. And it might very well be in probing it further that there might be a different conclusion about this for both of you. Mm -hmm. That you're respecting their experience. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of wading into this topic. Mm -hmm. and there are lots of ways that you could bring it up and kind of feel the degree to which somebody's willing to talk. Yeah, so how do you know if, they, if you bring it up that you, it's <laughs> that okay? They're willing to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because they may just want to move on and get past this darkness and just plow ahead. Yes. Or yeah. people may need to process it with somebody other than the people they spent the time with. Mm -hmm. um, so you can just, you can put a, a feeler out if it's the first couple of times you've encountered with them. Like, hey, you know, I'm wondering if you're willing to talk about, you know, di di just directly mm -hmm. about what it was like to blank, you know, to go through this at home with three kids or um, with your business or um, just say, I'm willing if you, I'm wondering if you're willing to, to discuss this. Mm -hmm. um, you could also just say, hey, I saw on the news. Did you see on the news that story about the blank, blank, blank? Uh -huh. And then you're kind of introducing it as this third party and they can pick it up on it and talk about it, and it's a foil to kind of talk sure. about it, and you can uh -huh. gauge their receptivity. So if about they said, that. "Oh, I don't even watch this. I don't even want to see anything more about then this," then you know, boom, you know, boom, yeah, or, <laughs> this or, is not. Oh, yeah, I saw that, and it, it reminds me of mm -hmm. my neighbor, or um, or you could just say, you know, how are you doing? As we seem to be coming out of this pandemic, at least for us in the United mm -hmm. States, because um, globally. Yes. It, it's certainly not at the same place. You can just kind of gently say, hey, how you doing? Uh -huh. you know, it seems like we're coming out of this thing. How, is, how are you doing? How's yeah. it going? Um, and that's an invitation. Mm -hmm. And you can pick up on that. Um, so another <laughs> reaction that might happen if we brought up the topic, and assuming, again, all these things we've talked about up to this point, what if the conversation suddenly gets very personal mm. or very emotional? and you suddenly realize, whoa, you know, I've opened up Pandora's mm -hmm. box here mm -hmm. uh, with it. So now what do I do you know, when I'm looking at this? 
Um, and I, I think one of the first things is to be careful of our reaction should that happen. Right. Uh, because it can be wanna, judgy. You yeah, don't want to be judgy. And we don't want to go, whoa, <laughs> like that <laughs> in front of them, even though we might be thinking that. Mm -hmm. So it's important, I think, to maintain a sense of acceptance mm -hmm. um, with it. You can still use that thoughtful inquiry. As we've inquiry. said in, in past shows about other topics. Yes. No, um, no we're, we're keeping curious and we're, we're right. reflecting back and we're not criticizing. Right. With it. Keep the listening going. Mm -hmm. that's, that's important. You never lose that way. Um, and you might, if you find that the person is really stuck in a very negative perspective of the whole thing, you might offer, if you felt comfortable doing that, a possible reframing of the way they're looking at it. So you can say, well, that, that's interesting that way. I guess the way I look at that is, and then introduce a different thing. Mm -hmm. Again, it's not for the purpose of allowing you to start talking about all your feelings. It's to help them think of it, oh, I guess I never thought of it that way. Mm -hmm and see if that brings about more conversation about that possibility. And the other thing is, if for some reason that happened, stay with the person. Right. Don't just suddenly <laughs> say, oh, wow, well, I've got to go now. Um, you know, I have an appointment. Uh, don't leave the person sort of hanging well, there. Because you with wouldn't want that to happen to you, to, to open up and to be vulnerable and think that this person is going to, like, walk through it with you and then be left right. high and dry. If they've opened themselves up to be vulnerable, respect that and mm -hmm. stay with it, uh, with it. So I think those are important things to do. But what about, Marcia, if you encounter someone with very opinionated things about dogmatic views about this mm -hmm. whole thing, then what do you do? What skills do you use? Well, I mean, this is something, I think these are muscles that we all need to build right now mm -hmm. about <laughs> all kinds of topics. and. Um, the best, I think the best response is to resist the compulsion to debate or to refute because my truth is my truth and your truth is your truth mm -hmm. and they are both valid. Mm -hmm. um, you can get closer to each other, um, but you're not going to persuade somebody to give up their truth unless you can examine it in a different way. So um, listen again, mm -hmm. um, whether whatever, whatever side they're on about this um, and ask questions about their point of view. Tell me more. Mm -hmm. Oh, and I think when you're talking about high, highly differing points of view, it's always good to say, what has led you to believe that? Or mm -hmm. where did you get your information? Or what life experience yes. has led you to feel this way? Mm -hmm. Because that's going to be really strong. And that's, that's true. Mm -hmm. If a, a person has experienced something that makes them believe something, um, that's what you can examine. And it might lead to a conversation away from the topic of, of the COVID and to something that, mm -hmm. as you say, that they've been through in their life. Which is, that now they're sharing with you, and you can go there with it. <coughs> um, very real and compelling. Mm -hmm. um, and you can approach it in that way. Um, you might find some intersection, excuse me, <coughs> where you can, you can respect or examine a part of what they're saying and still say, oh, I, I can see since that happened to you, why you would feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, I feel a little differently because th that didn't happen to me and I have these other experiences, but mm -hmm. I get why you would see that. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to completely um, <coughs> give up your, did you want some more of that? Sure, thanks. Um, you don't have to give up your, uh, your thoughts, your feelings, just because somebody else is expressing something differently from yourself. But uh, you can honor what they're saying. Honor their truth as their truth mm -hmm. and understand where it's coming from while still holding on to my perspective um, and sharing why I think this way. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, give it air and maybe there's some commonality. There might be something I could acknowledge about your truth or I could discover something that I didn't right. know. There's and learning you, you know, in that. You might yeah. discover something. And, uh -huh. um, but it, it's with patience and it's not with, um, you know, with your self-righteous certainty that you're right. <laughs> you're not gonna, you're just gonna um, 
escalate. Right, or desire to win and dominate. Mm -hmm. you know, and we've all been in our little enclaves, and uh, we haven't been practicing how to be with each other. Right. Uh -huh. And so we have to re-engage um, with this mindfulness and with this um, kind of deliberate courtesy mm -hmm. with each other. So at the same time that we've not had the experience of engaging with other people, but we've been going through some very powerful <sighs> emotions and circumstances in our lives. So yeah. the, the two of those together don't go well in terms of what the human being needs to yeah. heal and to go through an experience and recover. Our, a lot of our coping mechanisms have been uh, taken from us. Yes, yeah. Um, uh -huh. Yeah, it, but we're, we, I, I'm really confident that we can even do it better now. Yes. It's like I get another chance to build that relationship even better mm -hmm. with this person, but it's not going to be fast, and it needs to be with respect and patience, mm -hmm. both for um, ourselves and for others. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about um, if we've made the choice to engage in this mm -hmm. conversation. We've gone through those steps you've talked about. Um, what might be some lead-ins to phrases we yeah. could use or questions we might use? to engage this conversation, see where it goes. Because we're really trying to get the story of, how have you been since I saw you last? Or how, since right. I've been able to be with you in a regular basis? And mm -hmm. this can tease it out, because it was all about the same collective thing that we went through. Yes. Uh -huh. um, so one of the first ones might be, um, as you think on this past year, what stands out as the most significant event for you? Oof. Wow. Yeah. And you can see automatically you're beginning to kind of roll back and think, oh, what was yeah. that? Uh, and then you can weigh a few things because there may have been lots of little yes. moments, but then uh, it, spark, it could spark a really meaningful conversation. Mm -hmm. And then you can listen and then say, oh, well, then for me, mm -hmm. you know, if you have that opportunity to. And it might um, even uh, spark some humor. <laughs> It in, might, in yeah. Hopefully we things. can find some humor. Right, there. and there comes the catharsis. Yeah. With it. <laughs> so um, you could also ask, although this is pretty deep, um, when you reflect on the experiences that you went through with COVID, what did you learn about yourself? Or mm -hmm. what did you learn about others? Um, you know, the people you worked with, the people you lived with, your friends, mm -hmm. your family, or whatever. What did you learn? Yeah. Um, and that, you, that's something that you'd really need to have some trust, I think, mm -hmm. to talk to bring about. That up. Because it's not just a story. Mm -hmm. it's, some, it's reflection, and you are revealing um, internal things about yourself. Yeah. So. A lot of this is a lot of revealing and becoming vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, we could also talk about what was the most frightening or upsetting mm -hmm. part of this last year for you. Again, I, that's getting even deeper. Yeah, but that. I think that's important to exercise. If something was traumatic and frightening and hard for somebody, I think that's really something to tease out and mm -hmm. to, to express. Because if you're carrying that with you, it, it's going to just kind of get into your cells. I think right. that's really important if you can talk about it. And also understanding that someone may not choose to express that as being frightened or scared. Right. They express it as, well, they were really angry about this yeah. particular thing. Or which stressed. shows, Yeah, which yeah. shows that underneath then they were feeling some of these other feelings mm -hmm. with it. So that's, I think, an important thing to recognize. So there, there probably were good things. This is a, quite a long period of time. So you could say, hey, you know, all right, so what was the best thing yeah. that happened to you? Um, and... Maybe it was, it was, I was forced to learn about technology, or I know that a lot of parents were excited to have their adult children at home. Uh -huh. I don't know how the adult children felt, but, um, and I was jealous of that for people who had that. Or, um, you know, they reinvigorated a hobby, or they, there were good things that happened. Yes. A lot of people got pets, uh -huh. and I think that <laughs> yes. will be an enduring thing. That was a good, you know, COVID pets. Uh -huh. That will be something that that continues on that. Yeah, let's hope so, it continues yeah. yes, for the past. <laughs> another thing is, um, another question might be, what has the past year done, if anything, to make you a stronger person? Mm. So that's yeah. a little bit loaded because it's assuming that the person feels stronger. And maybe they didn't. And maybe they don't. Maybe so, they are. Uh, 
that, just but again, crushed. yeah, uh, I'm sure they would then say, well, I don't feel any stronger. And then you can I continue feel, to use the inquiry yeah. to I, find out, well, where are they? I feel yeah. diminished. I'm poor. I lost my job. I, you know, uh -huh. whatever. I feel defeated I by feel this. this uh -huh. And so that may be a plea for help, mm -hmm. you know, but it's good information to have. Um, we talked about gratitude and you could say, what are you grateful for? Mm -hmm. I don't mind. I'm, I'm very grateful to still be here. Yes. You know? Right. Uh, not everybody can say that. Uh, and um, what have you learned to value more as a result of COVID? I so think I, we I heard one person when I asked a question similar to that responded with uh, some of the um, frivolous nature of mm -hmm. some of the things that we've been spending our time doing mm -hmm. that we thought were so important. And COVID has taught us that it's not so important after yeah. all. <laughs> we, we took inventory and yes. now we understand what's important. Yes. Um, and I think that's, that's a good question to ask ourselves. And these are all good questions to ask interacting with another person, but mm -hmm. it's good inventory to take for ourselves too. Because whenever you go through something that's such a learning experience, what better thing to do than to actually learn from it and to go forward and be different. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. And that would be a good question. What has changed you? the most, you know, mm -hmm. how have you changed the most, um, in whatever way? And I mean, I can certainly think about a lot of these <laughs> answers. Um, it was, uh, it was like wrestling with your demons, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. um, Definitely. I, I felt that too. Yeah. And everybody mm -hmm. was doing that. And, and I think that there's some comfort of, of kind of going through this together. Um, it's about boundaries and, and reconnecting. And um, it's, I think it's good work. Mm -hmm. And you know, this, this conversation could come up as, as commonplace as like saying, you know, talking about the weather, you know, wow, it's hot or ho, oh, that COVID. <laughs> and it could be as superficial as that, or it could be a deeper portal to really reconnect with people. Because mm -hmm. we all had this collective experience um, but it can be light or it could be awkward and prickly yes. and we need to be alert because we don't want to re-wound people or to dismiss them. Here mm -hmm. is our chance to reconfirm our relationships and to build them. Um, so we kind of have to have our antenna up and we can't assume that we had the same experiences or that we're in the same place mm -hmm. as other people. Mm -hmm. And just like we've talked about stages of grief. So how we navigate and how we maneuver through this is really important and I think essential. Um, and that conversation with the other person can really help us to know yeah. how we want to navigate it. And you, let's use all the skills that we've been talking about for a couple of years now. Because mm -hmm. this was in a major pause and we get to reset. Yes. And we need mm -hmm. to engage with thoughtfulness and compassion and kindness and authenticity, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it's a great chance. So <laughs> thanks for being with us today as we have examined how we might re-engage with the people that are in our lives. And we look forward to seeing you next time on the Relationship Toolbox.